We're gradually learning more about swine flu virus and the way that it's spreading around the world. New laboratory data on the 2nd of May 2009 from Mexico City suggest that the death toll from swine flu virus has been less than thought. Mexico has just cut its suspected death toll from the H1N1 flu virus uh, to just around 100 people, down from 176. Dozens of samples that were previously testing positive have now come back negative. Meanwhile, South Korea has confirmed its first H1N1 case. By the way, the virus has been renamed uh, H1N1 by the World Health Authority because it wants to emphasize the fact that this is not a disease which is jumping rapidly from many pigs to many humans. It's a disease which is spreading between humans and it's not Mexican flu because it's a global phenomenon now and it's certainly uh, not a swine flu. Nevertheless, swine flu is the name which has stuck. Mexicans, meanwhile, are spending their, their second weekend knocked down. In the next five days, they're going to um, find that all the schools are closed, uh, most of the government offices are closed, many businesses are closed, and this is an attempt right across the entire country by the Mexican authorities to control the spread of swine flu. Now, what about the, the global situation? We've seen uh, in, in the United States, we've only seen one death, but 145 confirmed cases. We've seen 51 confirmed cases in Canada, 13 in Britain, Spain around 13, Germany 5, New Zealand uh, uh, 3, uh, France 2, Israel 2, Switzerland 1, Austria 1, Denmark 1. So we can say at the moment that this is becoming an international problem. Uh, we've seen a situation in the United States where not only has the U.S. declared a state of emergency over it, um, uh, but has... Uh, oh, there have been many states which have required a number of schools to close. There are hundreds of schools closed in different parts of the United States at the moment. And this will probably settle down. We need to see this in proportion. The fact is that normal flu, which uh, hits us every single year, kills around 37,000 people in the United States. Most of them you don't uh, make headlines about because they're old and frail people who were expected to die anyway over that particular winter, maybe. In the UK, we see around 12,500 deaths from flu. Across the European Union, it'll be about five, six, or seven times that figure. But the trouble is that with the amount of media attention on every single confirmed case and how each individual is doing, and uh, as each individual, as some of these individuals will die, um, uh, if, if, if this is anything like um, uh, what we've been expecting from the early cases in Mexico, then we're going to see occasional deaths, some deaths, 1%, maybe 0.1%. We just don't know what the death rate will turn out to be. But as individuals do die, we will see highly publicized funerals and so on. And you can imagine the impact if we were to see, say, 12,000 well-publicized deaths in the U uh, across the country from swine flu. There would be quite some considerable public concern. In fact, uh, you could see chaos, perhaps, and many people not wanting their children to go to school, um, uh, supermarkets running out of food because the lorry drivers don't want to turn up and, and, and deliver and so on. So it's uh, very, very important, as I say, to keep a sense of perspective. Meanwhile, countries like the UK have huge stockpiles of Tamiflu and, uh, and other drugs which are, have been shown to be really quite effective against swine flu virus if they're given in the first couple of days. One of the commonest killers of, of people with flu is, of course, secondary infections. It's when bacteria invade the lungs of people who have already got flu virus. Well, we're much better than we were, say, 5, 10, 15, 25 years ago in treating these kinds of secondary infections. And uh, you have to, you have to uh, recognize that doctors are ready around the world. Now, as I say, these are still very early days. We don't know whether the... Uh, the spread of swine flu can be contained. It looks very unlikely. The World Health Organization have said that this is now a level five um, uh, infection around the world, which means that a pandemic is imminent. But it doesn't necessarily mean, as I say, that it's a plague. It may mean that it turns out to be a relatively mild kind of ordinary type flu. We'll just have to wait and see. Scientists yesterday reported that the swine flu virus has receptors which are uh, targeting the nose of people, uh, human beings, um, and rather than the lungs. Now, this is good news because normal flu targets the nose rather than the lungs. SARS, in comparison, targeted the lungs, which meant that the illness started with a very uh, a ferocious lung infection, which was deadly in around 10% of the 860 people who were infected. So, as I say, watch the space. We have uh, plenty more news to come on this. 
but at the moment it's not, not looking anything like as bad as it seemed around a week ago when we had a death rate which appeared to be in Mexico around 10% of all those infected. We now can see that the swine flu virus has probably been around in Mexico since February and it may be that we've vast, the vast majority of cases of swine flu infection are, are, have been missed and always will be missed. They will never be detected. They've been muddled up with the normal uh, aches and pains and infections that the population gets in that part of the world over the last few weeks. So we'll just have to see what happens. But in the meantime, uh, there are many businesses and markets and investors that are worried. And we can expect to see a certain amount of anxiety around uh, the share prices of travel firms, uh, tourist companies, um, uh, airlines, and so on. And all that is to be expected. But as I say, we will know an awful lot more in the next couple of weeks. And by the end of May, we'll be pretty sure how the first phase of this is going to last. Now, season is on our, on our side here. We expect flu infections of all kinds to uh, almost die away over the summer months in the Northern, Northern Hemisphere, which is where um, billions of people live. And so even if we are going to be hit by a major pandemic of this swine flu virus, it may well be that we don't actually see that happen until the autumn. Now that's quite good news because um, we are already embarking on mass preparation of anti-swine flu vaccine. And that vaccine will start to come on stream around October. It takes about six months to prepare in bulk. Well, that could be around the time that uh, swine flu starts to rear its ugly head again. We'll just have to see what happens. But in the meantime, there is no need to panic.